was watching one of Silver Soul's videos this morning about the resurrection. And I quite enjoy Silver Soul's videos. Uh, he's a self-declared Christian, although it's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a, a different Christian to, uh, well, certainly any of the, the ones I've come across. It's, he's, he's, as I understand him, and I may be misunderstanding you here, uh, is you, you kind of embrace the poetics of Christianity and take the, the narrative as a series of, uh, of tropes and figures of speech and figures of practice and perhaps in some cases moral lessons and, and so on. Uh, and uh, as structuring elements through, through which to uh, give some basis to your thoughts and to your actions. And I can understand that, that's fine. But one of the things I had a problem with, with this particular one, was this idea of the miracle. Miracle. I spoken about miracles before and I keep coming back to it, because this is one of the places I often fall off the map as far as uh, religious tolerance is concerned. Because I think I am pretty tolerant of religion, I, and I genuinely do hear, enjoy reading about religion and hearing about it and watching documentaries about it and so on. I think it's fascinating. Even though I don't subscribe to any religion myself, and I'm a, an atheist, as I've said so many times, but, uh, but as I say, I do have a lot of sympathy with, uh, with, the, with, with what people are doing there, you know. Not necessarily what they're doing as a result of it, but what people are doing in it, I quite, I quite enjoy hearing about it. But this thing about the miracle, I just have a real problem with. Because it seems to me that if you are a methodological naturalist, which, which, you know, I think, to be fair, all of us are. I mean, I mean, most, I think, yeah, I think everyone on some level is a methodological naturalist. Everyone believes in the natural world. Everyone reaps the benefits of uh, the technology and the, uh, the social and, uh, and uh, material advances that have been made by those processes. You know, it, it's, it's not possible to survive. It's certainly not possible to be on the internet and, uh, and not have a serious foot in the methodological naturalism camp. Uh, but if you are, if you have that, if you are subscribing tacitly or explicitly to the tenets of methodological naturalism, I don't think it's compatible to say, to, to go along with miracles. And it's not really about believing in miracles. I don't know, some people, I guess some people do believe in miracles and some don't. But even the concept of it, I think, becomes um, meaningless under methodological naturalism. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a little bit like understanding combustion and, and using candles and, and uh, you know, having an awful lot to do with fire and having a chemistry degree so you understand the chemi chemistry of fire and then talk about phlogiston or then talk about caloric, you know, a completely different paradigm for how heat and flames are produced. And it's the same kind of thing for, mir for miracles with me. You know, if you... Methodological naturalism holds there. It's, there's some, some things we know, and there's always a, there's always a tentativeness about that knowing. Admittedly, there's some things we know, and there's some things that we don't know, and possibly there are some things we will never know. And that's I personally think there are some things we will never know. Uh, but the idea of the miraculous is absent from that. There is no miraculous under methodological naturalism. There is no point of entry. There's no space left for the miracle to intervene. I mean, David Hume talked about this. I mean, this is not this is not new stuff. Um, so I don't understand how the miracle can feature. And as I say, it's not about featuring it as a belief. It's just just using it in conversation and, and as, as currency as part of a thought process. I mean, what does it mean? You know, if you describe a miracle like the like the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, and you're kind of using that. Methodological naturalism, which we have to ad adhere to if we are going to do things like use the internet, uh, demands that a series of questions are asked about, you know, how did it happen? What was the process? What, bi what went on in the biology? You know, questions which could not have been asked up until 500 years ago or would not have made sense. Um, questions about the biology, questions about, you know, at what point did the putrefacting bacteria that were at work in the, in the dying and dead body of the Christ, at what point did they stop uh, doing their putrefaction thing? At what point did, uh, uh, did the, you know, the flies that were laying, the, laying the, uh, the, the eggs on the body of the dead Christ, at what point did those larvae stop growing? 
you know, a, a series of completely methodological questions. Um, and if you're saying, well, it just stopped and happened immediately, it was just some kind of miraculous event. Well, how did that happen? What was what was the process of that? And uh, yeah, I think just skate over that and just kind of use the word miracle. I just, I just find it so it's frustrating to me. I don't get it. It seems to be an indicator of almost a nostalgia for not knowing and for the the feelings of not knowing and I don't mean not knowing under methodological naturalism you know scientific not knowing is not the same it's a very different thing to mysterious not knowing but it's only different in the way it feels it's not really different you know getting, getting you know kind of fetishizing ignorance which I think is a lot of what goes on in, in, in mysticism is uh, yeah is undoubtedly does undoubtedly feel different and um, but that's not, it doesn't make the not knowing different. It doesn't make the knowledge any different or the absence of knowledge any different, really. It just makes it feel different. So, yeah, I just, I'm not sure if I've been very coherent here, really, but all I'm saying is that this idea of the miracle seems to me to be logically incompatible with any of the tenets of um, what I've already said. It's not, it's not um, Arthur C. Clarke saying, you know, any sufficient act. Sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Therefore, you know, any episode of magic should be understood as a sufficiently advanced technology. Um, that's, that's, and that's, that's the only way you can look at it. If Jesus rises from the dead, you've got to look for the technology. And there is a technology at work there. If you want to, you can deify, but that's optional. Uh, and unnecessary. <sighs> yeah, I think that's it. It's freezing in Cheshire here today, really cold, and, and a very cold north wind blowing. It was gorgeous the last couple of days, and now it's gone all... <laughs> it's not miserable. Yeah.